Hi kids, Pastor Brian here. Welcome back to Answers from Above. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. One of you out there recently asked the question, what does the wafer at communion taste like? I want to try one. I'm sure that many of your friends wonder that very same thing. You see moms and dads go up and have a wafer of bread and some wine or grape juice and you think to yourselves, well why can't I try that? I want to taste that. You might say to yourselves, I'm a big boy, I'm a big girl, I can do what you can do, mom and dad. Well, I'll let you know that that wafer of bread doesn't taste like much. The ones that we have here at church are just round, dry pieces of bread. A cracker even tastes better. And by themselves, though, you can have one of those pieces of bread because they're just bread. Just like by itself, the grape juice and wine are just something that someone can drink. You might even have a piece of toast and some grape juice for breakfast. But that wouldn't be the same thing as communion. See, Jesus tells us that he does something very special in communion. Something very powerful. You may have noticed that before we have communion at church, we always say the same words. The words that Jesus spoke to his disciples the night before he died on the cross to take away the sins of everyone. That night he was having a special meal with his friends and he got some bread and he gave it to them and he said, take and eat, this is my body. And then he gave them a cup with some wine in it and said, take and drink, this is my blood. Jesus was saying by those words that his body and his blood that he would offer up the next day on the cross were there in those things and that by taking them his disciples were being forgiven of all their sins. Now you know who Jesus is. You know that he is the Son of God so that what he says is true and powerful. While Jesus was here on earth he did miraculous things just by speaking words. He once made a storm stop just by saying the word. He drove out demons. He healed sick people instantly just by saying the words. So when Jesus tells us that this bread is his body and this wine or grape juice is his blood, we take him at his word. That even though we can't see it or taste it, we trust and believe that by faith what Jesus said is happening. That it's really there. Now when you hear that, you might say to yourself, you know, that's a little strange, or maybe even a little gross. Or you might say, wow, you know, a miracle, I want to be part of that too. And while that's a good thought to have in your heart, you should wait to receive the Lord's Supper for a couple reasons. One of them is that God says in his word, he wants those who take the Lord's Supper to understand what they're eating and drinking. That if someone eats the bread and the wine without realizing that they're also receiving the body and blood of Jesus, they actually take that to their harm rather than for their health and healing. So too, the Bible says that everyone who receives the Lord's Supper should be able to examine themselves. That's a fancy way of saying, look back on your day, on your week, on your life, and see what you've done wrong and how you need God's help to change. Now, I know for my own kids that it's hard for them to think about what they've done wrong in the course of a day. Sometimes at the end of the day when we say our prayers, we'll thank God for some things and tell him sorry for other things. And sometimes when that happens, when they get to the sorry part, they get real quiet. And they'll say, Dad, I can't remember anything that I've done wrong today. Even though they had just been fighting with brother or sister over a video game five minutes before. And so for all those reasons, my dear listener, it would be good for you to wait to receive the Lord's Supper until you're older. Until you've been taught fully who Jesus is, what he's done, what it means to follow him, and what the Lord's Supper is. But until then, Keep on studying. Keep on learning more about Jesus and know that the same forgiveness that your moms and dads receive when they go up to receive communion 
is the very same forgiveness that Jesus gives you and me every day. Your sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. Because Jesus lived a perfect life for us, died for us, and rose again. And that's a message that will always be sweet to our soul. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for forgiving all my sins. Help me to grow in love and trust and knowledge of you. I ask this in your name. Amen. Well, kids, thank you for joining us this week. Keep on sending in your questions. We'll see you next time. God bless.